Hello Yellow Army and welcome to Inside Playmore. This is a new series in which we will be catching up with United Manager Gary Johnson on a weekly basis with all the latest news from in and around Playmore. Here's what the gaffer had to say a little bit earlier on today when we caught up with him. Good afternoon Gary, how's things been in the Johnson household this week then? Quiet, <laughs> like everybody else's household and uh... Um, as far as you know, going out is concerned, we're trying to stick to all the all the self-isolating rules, etc. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a bit of a garden outside, so uh, you know we're not stuck indoors all the time, and we do try and do our uh, morning walks where we can. But um, you know, obviously, like everyone else, is just looking forward now to it. Uh, you know, the virus going away, and uh, we can get back to our normal day's work as it were so um so a little bit frustrated sitting at home and and every day that goes by we're looking forward to uh the season starting again now on the uh, website earlier this week uh we were inviting the yellow army to share with us how they've been maintaining their competitive competitive edge you also took some time out to showcase your own talents uh with the golf clubs yeah i don't know about talent you don't know how many time, how many shots it took me to get that little ball in that bucket but um, uh, to be honest, it was a, it was a good exercise out there. Um, it was nice because my short game needed a bit of uh, touching up anyway. Um, and to be honest, I was quite pleased that I got it pretty quick in the number of shots that I, that I did. And uh, I only decided to video it just in case I had a stroke of luck and got one in. So I'm pleased I did in the end and um, sent it in. Had a chat with Downsy, said, Go on, Downsy, you've got to send yours in, um, think of something. And I thought his was brilliant as well, you know, like the, the Aussie side of it with a boomerang, and he'd, he'd done well. It was a, it was a nice piece. So I've, I have asked the other members of staff to, to send one in. So uh, I'd like to remind them that this uh, it's not a request, it was a demand. <laughs> so uh, we'll have to wait and see what, what comes in. And we've had a couple in, haven't we, you know, from from people that uh, you know want to show off their skills, but it'd be nice if we get a, get a few more. Yes, we certainly have. So in case anybody that's watching at home, in case any of you have missed it, here's a quick clip of the gaffer in action. Okay, so you set the shot. It's a quiet neighbourhood. I'll walk up and show you how far that was. Count me steps. Views. Okay, so Gary, you're clearly a man of many talents. We've also seen some of the players and staff showing their appreciation for the NHS on social media this week. That was great to see, wasn't it? Fantastic and uh, well deserved, of course. You know, the, the one thing we're you know, we're all the same during this uh, terrible time is that you know everyone knows how much work the NHS have done and how much we need them. You know, I've had my own problems that they sorted out for me and I'm great, grateful for that. Um, my dad was in hospital over the last couple of weeks, not with coronavirus but with something else and 
and, and they looked after him and he's out now. So, um, you know, there's so much we've got to thank the NHS for and this gives us a great opportunity. You know, we're, we're not isolated here, but we, me and Karen were outside. We could hear clapping in the distance at eight o'clock last night. So we started clapping as well. And, um, and that was nice. And that's obviously two or three times now we, we've done it. And it does show the appreciation. And yeah, when you started doing the rainbows, it was a joke on you really, wasn't it? Because it was a, a kiddies, <laughs> a kiddies competition. And you, <laughs> you rang me back and said, oh, lovely drawing. How old? And what was the name of the person that sent it to you? And uh, I said, 64, and it's mine. <laughs> so that was, uh, that caught you out a little bit. But um, it was nice that you know, we, we sent it, didn't we, to the Tor Bay Hospital, thanking all the nurses. And um, it was something I could do. I'm not bad at drawing. And uh, there was, I think there were some nice words, some words from the heart on it that uh, we could send out. Yeah, absolutely. We can't thank the, the NHS enough. And yes, you did certainly catch me out on that one. I will admit that. <laughs> OK, so obviously the footballing action has been on hold recently. But one man who has been very hard at work has been Julian Goldthorpe, United's groundsman. On our website earlier this week, the pitch was looking absolutely fantastic. He, he's done a great job this season, hasn't he? He's done a fantastic job. You know, there was a, there was a lot of games on it at a certain point, And obviously we, we got over last year's problems and uh, then you know we had to get over a bit of drainage because we had so much water on the pitch it was unbelievable and I don't think we trained on grass for like four five months because of the rain and the soaked uh, training ground so I was very lucky that we had uh, South Devon College AstroTurf to, to train on otherwise we'd have struggled in and around the Torbay area um, but Julian has been working on that pitch he's had some time to you know, put some work in and he's certainly done that and, you know, we're proud of him and uh, he's, he's our groundsman of the year anyway, whatever happens, even if we can't, can't finish the end of the season. But it will certainly, if we do start football uh, again uh, in the coming weeks, then, uh, you know, people will see what a great job Jules has done and uh, yeah, we appreciate, we appreciate, appreciate what he does very much. So, well done, Jules. You don't get too much praise and uh, he certainly deserves it. Along with his you know, his helpers and his colleagues, but uh, George has been the one that's been on that pitch full time for the uh, for the past month or so. Yeah, it might sound like an obvious question, but I mean, how important is it that the pitch is in the best possible condition for when the fixtures do get back underway? Well, it just makes you look more professional, doesn't it? You know, if, if you've got a pitch that looks the part, you know, you don't see any uh, scraggy, if that's the word, scabby pitches in the championship or in the premiership so you know when supporters come to uh, see a football match they obviously they like to see lush green grass being played on and uh, it does suit our play uh, obviously sometimes you know, when it's a little bit more muddy and it certainly gets muddy just in front of the dugouts every now and again uh, on the Bristol bench side um, sometimes you have to adjust um, but I'm you know I'm comfortable with that uh, but it's always better to see a you know a nice pristine green pitch that's flat and uh, Julian's worked very hard to get that and he certainly got it at the moment and uh, it'll be lovely the, the lads will be very impressed uh, and very excited to to play their next game on that pitch. Absolutely. Now, I don't know about you, Gary, but I always think that Easter seems to get earlier each and every year. Uh, of course, this time last season, we were looking ahead to facing Eastbourne Borough at Playmore in a match that would see us eventually clinch the National League South title. Gary, what do you remember in, about the build-up to that game? I mean, obviously, we built up quite a healthy lead, but were there still some nerves in the change room before kickoff? Well, yeah, of course there were. Uh, there was, because, you know, without nerves it means you you don't care so we we all had nerves but um the the game that sort of was the build-up if you like to the uh, eastbourne borough game was obviously the woking game you know and we knew that we had to win that game we knew that a, uh, a win or a draw was beneficial to us uh, and woking could only they needed to win it i think they were uh, eight points behind us, and if they're the one, they'd have only been five points behind us with, I think, four games left. So um, they would have still felt they had a chance of, uh, you know, being champions. So you know, Ben Winter's goal really was celebrated by the players and the fans, 
as if you know we'd won the league at that time, but we still needed a another win at least, and and that led us into the uh, the Eastbourne Borough game, where the boys knew that if they won this game, we were champions, and they'd worked very hard all season. And some of them had took a bit of stick and come through it, and uh, you know you'll you'll know the story if if you, you bought our video. Um, which uh, will stand the test of time. But um, yeah, the lads were nervous before the game and we talked about what they needed to to be if, if they wanted to be champions and, and what makes a champion. And we went through a few things, you know, like that. Uh, of course, you need that desire and passion and the ability. And this was, I could say, win this game and this proves you've got all these things, you know, where the work ethic, the honesty, the teammates you can rely on, all the things we use throughout the season, um, the mindset and, you know, once a champion, always a champion and it's always on your, on your CV. So it was, a, it was a great day for us because the goals came at the right times as well. We got a pretty early goal with, with Connor getting the penalty. Um, that was good. I can't remember why Connor took it instead of Reedy. Maybe Reedy had missed his previous couple. Um, but really nearly nicked it off him in the end anyway because it was like a it was a save from the goalkeeper and it was a race between Connor and Reedy as to who put the uh, rebound in and Connor just got there uh, in time and then obviously I'll never forget the raw the actual plain more raw we'll have to call it that the plain more raw went up when Jake Andrews um, smashed the ball in the top corner with a side volley and then done his triple solco and a double flip, whatever it was, and landed on his feet and got a maximum 10 for it. But uh, the fans responded to that great. The, the players responded to that. And, um, of course, at that point, you knew, you know, two nil, five minutes to go, we were champions. And uh, that was a fantastic feeling. And the, the actual celebration after the game, you, you'll never forget either. Well, they won't forget it. People won't forget it anyway because it's on videos, it's on our video, it's on YouTube, it's on the club's videos. Um, and it was just the club coming together as one and uh, excited that we've done the first part of our um, plan. And that was to, to get back into the National League straight away. And uh, credit to the boys because they put in a lot of effort to do that and everybody appreciated it. And, uh, you know, we became a, a, a strong committed unit that day as a club. You certainly did. Okay, so let's take a quick look back at the action on that afternoon against Eastbourne Borough and remind ourselves how United secured that promotion clinching win. <laughs>
Okay, Gary, watching that video again, that must have brought back some really good memories. What, what was it like when that final whistle blew and, and you knew there was Woking couldn't catch us then, we, we were the champions? Well, it was job done, wasn't it, really? I know we still had uh, three or four games to go, um, but to, to know that we, to win the league as champions with three or four games to go, um, three, I think, wasn't it? But, um, yeah. you know, what, what an effort that was, uh, especially when, you know, I think at that point we were 10 points clear or something, maybe more. Um, and yet we were, what was it, 14 points behind when we all first got together at the Hungerford game. So it was a, a, a magnificent effort from, from the lads and, and from all my staff and, and the supporters to get the club into that position. So it was a relief, that's for sure, uh, because we thought it would probably go to the last games of the season. Um, and the boys were in the dressing room and I think everybody would have seen the, the antics and the champagne Charlies, as it were, <laughs> who couldn't open their bottle of champagne properly. And, um, and then when they did, they started drinking, gulping it down and realised why they were nearly falling over when they come back on the pits to see the see the fans and, and say thank you. Um, but that was their their pictures you'll never forget. You know, that will be forever in your memory. And, uh, you know, those boys will never forget it because for most of them, it was their first uh, first ever trophy. It was their first, first ever promotion. Um, and, and that bodes well for them in the future. And uh, so it was a, it was a really uh, close knit family group when we got back into the dressing room and everybody, you know, there wasn't a care in the world and uh, everybody wanted to thank everybody else for, for you know, helping them become a champion. And of course, following the eSport match itself, of course, there was a very special occasion just a few days later when the Yellow Army turned out in force, over 5,000 supporters there at Plainmore to see the club actually lift the first title in 92 years after the Hungerford match. That must have felt very special, but how did that rank with all the other promotions that you, you've won throughout your career? Well, it, it's all promotions are up there with all the others, to be honest, Dom. You know, it's like, you know, you 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 want to bring a club together when you're manager of a of a football team and and when you see that you know that you've done your job as as a manager and um in fact the the, the game after um when we played uh hungerford to well we played chippenham first didn't we and and we, we didn't get a great result there i think it was like after the lord mayor's show and then at home to hungerford i'll always remember um because you know the club put on a fantastic, uh, great show with giving everybody the, you know, the gold flags and there was noise and it was like a carnival atmosphere, wasn't it, against uh, Hungerford. And at half time, um, the boys were a bit disappointed, um, you know, because it, the, we wanted to win it 6 0 for our fans. And then at the end of the game against Hungerford, um, and we'd lost 1 0, they were was, they was down. Absolutely, and yet we were champions, we won the league. Um, and I had to pick them up. I said to them, look, you know, you're champions, you've done it. It's not about this one game, it's about the whole season. Now, you'll be disappointed in here, but as soon as you go out there, them fans are going to make you all feel seven foot tall. They're going to make you feel proud that you, you know, represented their club and, and they're happy with you and that, and you will forget about this result. So go out and enjoy it with your supporters because they love you, you we love them, uh, and let's enjoy getting the trophy. And I think the, the pictures of that as well, with the lifting of the trophy and the antics that the lads got into, they'd forgotten about that result, as the fans did straight away, and uh, because we, we needed to celebrate. And was it a record, Dom, in the end? Because they said over 5,000, was, was that going to be a record? or? Yeah, it was a it was a record for the uh, National League South. It did break a new record for the attendance. So it, yeah, it was a memorable day all round. And and obviously around Playmore, we've still got those lovely photos everywhere of of the trophy yeah. being lifted. Yeah, well, it gives you it gives you something to put up on the walls, doesn't it? And you, we had the trophy for for a year or, or so. And um, again, when you walk past the photos and the trophies, even when new players come in, 
they know they're coming into a, you know, a successful club alongside a successful group of people that are, are already there. And, um, you know, uh, we want the season to start again because we want to prove that actually with, with our strong squad now sort of back together, some will be getting back from injuries and that, we can make up that, you know, 10 points uh, to a playoff spot, i.e. We're, uh, we're 10 points behind the uh, seventh, but we've got three games in hand. And other teams are ahead of us, of course, but we'd have to win eight out of ten, I would have thought. But we've done that. We've done that this season. And uh, so, you know, I, I really want the season to, to finish. And, and so does the club. I know there's talk about other other things and you know, maybe you know, cancelling the season and things. But, um, you know, it'd be fantastic if we can uh, get over this coronavirus, because that's the most important, looking after people and, and not... You know, helping the virus to come back, so we don't want you know them to do anything that's dangerous. But uh, if it does go, we'll have that hope. We we need that hope of have, being able to play games again come June, if you like. We need that hope, and if it doesn't happen, then you know, un unlucky. There's nothing we can do about it. It's been a terrible disease. Um, but if it does, then we got a job to finish, and uh, and I'd like to think so. Have all the other teams got a job to finish? But uh, we'll wait and say, see what happens with that. But as I say, I'm looking forward to uh, the season starting again. Absolutely, as I'm sure we all are. And just before we go, Gary, just wondered if we could uh, uh, give a special mention to a supporter um, that was actually going to be making a 400 mile round trip uh, to watch the lads today. Uh, she's celebrating her 26th birthday. Um, just wondered if you could wish a happy birthday to Amy Popkins. Well, of course I can. Amy, <laughs> it's uh, it's probably saved you a long trip anyway, but I'm sure you was looking forward to it. And we thank you for your support. And of course, we wish you a very happy birthday. And uh, actually, I've been wishing you a happy birthday for the last two months because when I'm not washing my hands, I've been singing, you're supposed to be singing happy birthday. But now I'll be out of book. Dear Amy, into the song, so uh, you'll be in me in me song every morning when I wash my hands. <laughs> and every time. So I hope we see you soon, Amy. And um, again, thanks for your short support. Happy birthday! Yeah, happy birthday, Amy, from everybody at the Talk United. Well, Gary, do you do you think I look all right with this halo around me in the back here? I've I've tried to place myself strategically. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, does it look like I'm in Game of Thrones or not? That's exactly what I was about to say, Gaffer. Actually, I think it's. I think you're looking very grand now. I, I think it's very beautiful, <laughs> especially as we're talking about being champions as well. It's a mirror, by the way. But anyway, it's a. It's the only person that see the back of the head. But yeah, it's a uh, yeah. Interesting, isn't it? That picture. <laughs> well, Gary, thank you for joining us today. We'll hopefully speak again very, very soon. To see us out, let's look back at what we were just talking about just then and what was a very memorable day at Playmore as United were presented with the National League South title. We'll see you all again very soon. In the meantime, of course, take care and keep yeah. safe. Yeah, stay safe, stay at home for the minute and uh, good luck to everybody. See you soon.